In a previous video, we saw how to use Langchain, OpenAI, and PG Vector in order to create vectors from a piece of text and store them in a vector database. In this video, we're going to go one step further and we're going to look at a process called Retrieval Augmented Generation. And this is a process where we take the most similar documents from the vector database to a query that the user provides. We fetch those documents and we provide them as additional context to a large language model. And this can be important in a question answering context when we take a question that the user has provided and we want to get some supplemental information out of the database to provide to, for example, a chat GPT model. And then chat GPT can look at that supplemental context and give you a good answer to your question. So in order to do this, in this video, we're going to look at Langchain Retriever objects. And we're also going to look at the Retrieval QA chain that exists in Langchain to tie all of this together. So let's get started. I have open here a Jupyter Notebook and this contains some code from the previous video. We're going to do a very quick walkthrough of this code. The previous video should be appearing on the screen now. If you've not seen that, that will get you set up with this code and with the vector database. And if you have already seen the previous video or you're not interested in this walkthrough, you can skip to the next section of the video. So what we have here is the .n file that contains the OpenAI API key. We're loading that in using Python's .env library. And then in the cell below that, we're loading in this state of the union dot text file this exists in the local directory so if I open that up you can see this text file containing the state of the union so we have that text file we're loading that in using the Langchain text loader and then you can see we have a single document in the resulting documents when we call that load method we're then splitting that document using the recursive character text splitter and we're separating the document into chunks of size 1000 characters with a chunk overlap of 80 characters and that process gives us back a set of text from that original source document which we then use below. So what we're doing below is we instantiate an OpenAI embeddings object. And then here we use the PG vector object from Langchain's vector stores module. And we're calling its from documents method and passing in the OpenAI embedding object that we created. We're also passing in the documents that we split from the original text. And we have also some connection strings and a collection name that we're passing to this from documents function. And this function here, the PG vector from documents function will handle the process of taking those documents, embedding them using the OpenAI embeddings object, and then storing the vectors in the underlying vector store, which in our case is PG vector. Once we have that DB object that represents the vector store, we can then use the similarity search with score function and pass any query we want to that function. And we get back the most similar documents to that query along with a score when we use that function. So this is a way to get the most relevant documents out of a vector database and return them to the user based on a query that they define. So why is that useful? In this video, we're going to use the most relevant documents that we get back from the vector database, and we're going to pass them as supplemental context to the open AI language models. And this allows us to perform question answering over a set of text that we pass as context, and it lets the language model give us back the best possible answer because it has that useful supplemental context that comes from the vector database. Now in order for this to work we need to have PG vector or PostgreSQL running. So we have that running in a Docker container at the moment. And if you want to know how that's done, we have a blog post here as well, which contains this Docker run command that you can use to start the database. And you can follow that through in order to get to this point in the demonstration. What we're going to do now that we have this set up out of the way is we're going to look at something called a retriever in Langchain. And as it says here, a retriever is an interface that returns documents given an unstructured query. So basically given a piece of text, the Langchain retriever is going to look at the vector store or whatever the underlying retrieval object is, and it's going to return a set of relevant documents based on that query. And the retriever does not need to be able to store documents, it only has to return or retrieve them. Now it's very easy to create a retriever object in Langchain from an existing vector store object. So what I'm going to do is remove this function here. Here. And we're going to reference that DB object that we created here, which is basically the PG vector vector store object. We can use that and we can call a function on that to get back a retriever. And the function that we're going to call is the as retriever function. And by default, when we create a retriever, it's going to return the four most relevant documents from the underlying database. But we can provide a key 
keyword argument here called search quarks and we can set that to a dictionary in Python and one of the keys that that takes is the key of K and that can be set to a number and that specifies the number of documents you want to get back from the vector database. So in other words, the K most relevant documents. So we're going to create this object and we're going to store it in a variable called retriever. So we're going to execute that and we get back this retriever object and if we look at the type of this retriever object, you can see that it's of type vector store retriever. So this is a retriever over a vector store and the vector store we're using is PG admin. Now very quickly we're going to take a look at one of the database tables that were created when we called the PG vector from documents function and it was the embedding table here. So I'm going to look at the first 100 rows in that table and you can see that that is populated with the text that we got back when we split up that state of the union text and we have one of the columns being the embedding column. That's what's going to be used to determine the most relevant or the most similar documents to a given query. So we have a table that's populated with texts. We're now going to use them to perform retrieval augmented generation. We have our retriever object, but we need to create another object now, and that's going to be a retrieval QA chain in Langchain. So the purpose of the retriever is just to get back the most relevant documents from the database. The retrieval QA chain is going to tie everything together and it's going to perform the whole process of pulling those relevant documents and calling the OpenAI language model with that context added. So let's bring a couple of imports in from Langchain. We have from the chains module the retrieval QA chain that we're going to use to tie everything together and we're also going to use the OpenAI LLM. So we're going to create one of these retrieval QA objects by calling retrieval QA and we're going to pass a number of parameters to that. The first parameter we're going to pass is the LLM itself and the LLM we're going to use is the OpenAI object that we imported. So let's instantiate that and pass that as the LLM. We also need to pass in a retriever that's going to retrieve the relevant documents from the vector database. So we're going to pass in that retriever that we created on the cell above here by calling the vector stores as retriever function. We get that back and we're passing it in here to the retrieval QA chain. And finally at the moment what I'm going to pass in is a chain type and we're going to set that equal to stuff. And this is the most simple chain type that we can use here, a stuff chain. It's going to fetch the most relevant documents using the retriever and it's simply going to add them or stuff them into the context that's sent to the OpenAI language model. And we can look at the documentation for this here. I'll link this below the video. As it says here, this basically takes a list of documents and inserts them all into a prompt and passes that prompt to the LLM. And this chain is well suited for applications where the documents are small and only a few are passed in for most calls. Now, just to elaborate on that a bit, when we use the stuff chain, we're going to be passing the entire document in for the key documents that we are finding from our retriever object. So so these documents do have to be quite small because if you exceed the context window of a particular language model, you're not going to be able to perform that query. So the stuff chain type is only suitable when you have a small number of relatively short documents and you can then add them to the context of the prompt that you're sending to the language model. Now this retrieval QA chain that we have here, it's going to handle the entire process of vectorizing a query that we're going to pass in when we call this QA objects run method in a second. We're going to vectorize or embed that query and the chain will also handle finding the most similar documents, the most relevant documents using the retriever and adding those documents to the context or the prompt that's passed to the language model. And finally, it will also call the language model with that particular prompt and then generate a response and return that response to the caller. So what I'm going to do is take the query that we've got up here and just for clarity, I'm going to copy it down to this cell here. And what we're going to do now is call the QA objects run method and we can pass the query into that and make sure you execute this cell above as well. And I'm getting an error when I execute that and that's because I'm going to call a particular function that's defined, a static function on the retrieval QA object and that's the from chain type function. So rather than just instantiating a retrieval QA object, what I'm doing here is calling the from chain type static function and that's when we pass in these arguments. So let's re-execute this and below we can run the query against that retrieval QA chain. When we execute that, it's going to generate a response from the query and the query was what did the president say about Russia? So that's a question that we now have an answer to below. And this answer is informed or it comes from the context that we're sending to the OpenAI language model. And that context comes from the most relevant documents that have been retrieved from PG Vector using this retriever object. 
And this whole process is called retrieval augmented generation, where we get some relevant documents from the vector database or any underlying data store. And we pass those documents into the context or the prompt that's sent to a language model in order to inform the answer that it's going to give us back. And it's worth saying as well that this approach will work with any vector store. If we have a vector store object, we can call the as retriever function to get back the retriever. And it doesn't matter if we're using PG vector or another vector store that's integrated into Langchain, for example, the Astra DB or Cassandra vector store or the Chroma vector store or any of the other ones, this approach will work with all of those vector stores. So this is a very generalized approach. And that's one of the main benefits of Langchain. It gives you this uniform interface into all of these language models and vector stores and so on. So that's the general approach that we can use for retrieval augmented generation when we have some documents in a vector database and we want to use them to help us answer a question. But what if we want to customize the prompt that's being sent to the language model? So I'm going to go to a section of Langchain's documentation on using custom prompts in a retrieval QA chain. And what I'm going to do is just copy this prompt into the Jupyter Notebook and we'll do that just down here. So we're importing the prompt template and we're giving it a particular piece of text here. Use the following pieces of context to answer the question at the end. If you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know. Don't try and make up an answer. And then we pass in the context and that is going to be the documents that we're getting back from PG Vector, the most relevant documents to the user's query. And below that we have the question and that's the user defined question. And that's ultimately what we want to get the answer back for but we want to use the context that we're also passing in to do that. And then we have an additional instruction at the bottom to answer in Italian. For now, I'm going to remove that, but we will bring that back at the end of the video. So let's execute this and that gives us back this prompt. What we can then do is create a Python dictionary, which we'll call chain type quarks. And we're gonna give that a key of prompt in this case and set that equal to the prompt that we have above. So we need to pass these chain type quarks into this retrieval QA object that we have above. So what I'm gonna do is just copy that down below and I'm gonna paste it underneath this. And we can add another keyword argument called chain type quarks here. And we're gonna set that equal to the dictionary that we defined above. So to the retrieval QA objects from chain type function, we are passing in this extra keyword argument for creating the prompt that we're gonna to use to pass to the language model. So let's execute this. And then below that, we can rerun the query that we had above here. So let's copy that down below and rerun this. And we get a slightly different answer to what we had before. And that makes sense because this is not a deterministic approach. But what we have is now we have the ability to pass in a custom prompt to the retrieval QA object. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting. If we pass in something that is totally unrelated to the context, for example, what is a black hole? That's a question that was not in any way related to the context of the State of the Union text. So let's execute this and see what it gives us back. And we just get back the text, I don't know. And that makes sense because if we look at our prompt, we have this section here. If you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know. Don't try and make up an answer. And that is what it's doing here when we ask it this question. That is something that if we didn't specify the context, a language model would try and answer that question. But because it's not in any way related to the context and we are telling the model to use this context, it is now answering, I don't know. So let's go down and we're gonna change this question back to what it was before. And I'm gonna bring back the prompt instruction here to answer in Italian. Let's now execute this template again and we can pass these details back into the function. And this time we're going to get back the answer to the question in Italian and we can see that down below here. I'm not gonna try and say that, but this answer is now in Italian and this instruction has been created from our custom prompt. So we're very easily able to customize these prompts and pass them to the retrieval QA chain in order to customize what kind of answer we're getting back from the language model. So let's finish this video with a final example, return an answer in the style of a pirate. So let's execute this and execute the cell below. And finally, we can run the QA.run method to get back an answer to this query in the style of a pirate. And you can see that style below here. 
and we can rerun this query multiple times. Some of the answers are funnier than others. In this case, it's just added this to the start of the text, basically. Not exactly like a pirate, but it will do for this example. So thank you for watching this video. There's also a blog post on this content, which is at the top of the description. Check that out if you want to know anything else about this content. If you have any further requests for vector database and language model content, please let me know in the comments. And if you're enjoying this content and you can spare the money for a coffee, we have a link to a coffee account in the description. And finally, if you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.